Let's take a look at the input section channel strip. To do this, simply push the screen assign in the left-hand section of the lower panel above the bank assign buttons. Although at first the console looks different to an analog console, the design concept is in fact very similar. You'll notice 12 channel strips on the screen that are laid out like a traditional channel. At the top, you have an input gain, then EQ and dynamics, followed by the AUX sends, and finally the bus routing, fader, and mute. The screen is a pressure touchscreen, so firmly pressing, not fast tapping, will assign and open sections of the channel strip. Routing inputs to channels could not be simpler. Select the channel you want to route and press the very top of that channel strip on the screen. This will open the setup panel for that channel. You then have some routing options. The first choice to make is, do you want this channel to be a mono or stereo channel? All channels on the SD9 are flexi channels, so can all be quickly switched to stereo. In this instance, let's look at a mono channel. Each mono channel has two inputs, a main and an alt input. This means all mono channels can have two physical inputs connected to them. These can be quickly switched as required. They are ideally for running backup or spare inputs into a channel, with the benefit of not taking up work surface faders or channel processing. To switch between the main and alt, just press the desired input switch on screen. Let's press the main input routing button. Now you can see an expanded input panel that shows you the currently connected racks and devices. This will normally include MISC, where you will locate your tone generator and pink noise, for example, local I.O. This is the I.O. on the rear of the console work surface. One, rack one, and two, rack two. One for each D-rack frame that is connected. MADI. This might be available if you have a MADI recorder, such as Pro Tools or Logic Audio connected to the system. Let's press the first rack option and you will see a further expanded view, this time to show you the cards on the rack. Press the card you want to access and now you can select down to the physical XLR input you want on this channel. Pressing the input you want will bring that input into the channel strip. This section only covers the basic routing of a channel. To find out more about ripple routing and the other features of this setup panel, please watch the input channel section. To close the input setup panel, press at the top of the input strip again or press the close button and the panel will close. Using the quick select section of the work surface, press the gain button. This will assign the row of rotaries under the screen to gain control. This will allow you to use the rotary to accurately set the gain of the channels you have just routed into that section. If you would like to access the other features of the channel processing, you can assign channels by pressing them on screen. The best area to press is the large EQ display for each channel. Once pressed, a channel will highlight and at this time the channel controls to the right of the screen are assigned to the selected channel. In this area you will find EQ controls, basic dynamics controls and channel switching for inserts and direct outputs. To interrogate the units in more detail, pressing them will expand the view of both the EQ and dynamic sections. When expanded, the EQ controls remain on the right-hand side rotaries, but when looking at the dynamics units, the rotaries below the screen assign to the dynamics controls and highlight on the screen with the halo. Pressing the row of dynamics controls you want will assign them to the rotaries. On the SD series of consoles, you have some enhanced dynamics units only available on Digico consoles. These advanced units can be assigned to either input channels or output channels. 
These include powerful four-band dynamic EQ and multi-band compression units. These advanced dynamics are mentioned in greater detail in the input channel section, including some ideas of how they can help you. Beneath the dynamics units, you'll see a row of auxiliaries. We have already discussed how the busing of the console can be tailored to your requirement. The auxes available will be the same as you allocated in the session structure panel we covered earlier. To assign the auxiliaries to the rotaries, you can either touch a row on screen or press the AUX button in the Quick Select area. Once they are assigned, the screen scroll will move you up and down the available AUXs. The rotary will now adjust the send level of the auxiliary and the button will turn the send off and on. When the second function button is selected, the rotary controls the pan on stereo auxes and the button conveniently switches between pre-mute, pre-fade post-mute and post-fader. On screen at the bottom of the channel, you have the output routing. Pressing the lower section opens the routing options for bus routing and insert sends. The routing is performed by simply pressing on screen the desired location. Each channel can be routed to any group bus, multiple direct outputs, and a single insert point that can either be pre or post the channel's processing. On the work surface, you have both a fader and a mute. These are self-explanatory, but it's worth highlighting when in second function mode, the mute button acts as a hard mute. This mutes the input at the top of the channel strip and is ideal to silence a faulty input, etc. When a channel is in hard mute, the channel's mute button flashes to indicate the difference between standard and hard muting. 